chapter 41, the church is one foundation. The church is one foundation seems quite simple on the surface without going into a deeper Bible study. Footnote number one. This is an edited transcript of a sermon preached in June 2018 by James W. Knox at Antioch Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee, used by permission. However, there is more than one verse on the subject, and the layers of complexity increase with the introduction of other Bible verses. Certain truths prove helpful and will remain unchanged despite the added complexities. Number one, the foundation is laid. And number two, the foundation, or at least the chief cornerstone of the foundation, is Jesus Christ. With this in mind, to understand the biblical concept of a foundation, we must first get a biblical mindset concerning how the Bible defines a foundation. In the Bible, nations had foundations, Exodus 9.18. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as hath not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Buildings had foundations, 1 Kings 5.17. And the king commanded, and they brought great stones, costly stones, and huge stones to lay the foundation of the house. Earth has foundations, Psalm 102.25. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. Isaiah 40.21. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? Egypt as a nation had a foundation. That foundation refers to its beginning. David commanded stones to be brought to lay the foundation of the temple. To what would that foundation refer? The beginning. Both the book of Psalms and Isaiah refer to the earth's foundation. To what would that foundation refer? According to Isaiah 40:21, it refers to the beginning. Apparently, the basic concept of a foundation in the Bible involves a beginning or starting place. This is an important concept for understanding the church's foundation or beginning. The church has a foundation. 1 Corinthians 3:11, for other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Concerning the beginning of the church, obviously John the Baptist is not the foundation of the church. This is because John was not the starting place of the church. Additionally, since Jesus Christ is the foundation, number one, the church is not a continuation of Old Testament Israel. Two, the church is not the continuation of the Old Testament covenants. Number three, the church is not a replacement for a failed Old Testament program. And number four, the church did not start with John the Baptist or John the Methodist or John the Presbyterian. The church started with Jesus Christ, its foundation. The church is an entirely new thing. The church is not a carryover from something before it. It is not an improvement of something already in existence. The church is not a renovation of anything God had ever done before. The church started with Jesus Christ as its foundation. Specifically, the laying of this foundation coincided with the Lord's crucifixion. After all, during Christ's earthly ministry, he promised, I will build, future, my church, Matthew 16, 18. The Lord's allusion to building something, yet unconstructed, most definitely provides the context as to the church's origin being yet future at that time. In the Old Testament, Christ was prophesied as a stone refused by the builders, the nation of Israel. Footnote number two, you can look up Psalm 118.22, talking about the stone become the headstone of the corner. Isaiah 8.14, a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense. Isaiah 28.16, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. The Old Testament shows that the rock was manifest to Israel in the context of the Davidic kingdom with veiled prophetic references to Daniel's 70th week, Daniel 2, 34 and 35. These references most assuredly look forward to the rejected stone and are fulfilled in the New Testament and are directly associated to Christ's rejection and crucifixion, Mark 12, Luke 20, 17 and 18, Acts 4, 11. The rejected Christ became the precious cornerstone, the head of the corner. Matthew 21, 42. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Paul later declared Christ as the foundation, 1 Corinthians 3, 11, and chief cornerstone of the one body consisting of Jews and Gentiles, Ephesians 2, 20. These truths all point to Christ's crucifixion as the time of initial construction, a crucifixion announced in the context 
of the initial proclamation of the church, Matthew 16, 21 and 23. Concerning the church and its construction, Christ simply prophesied of events that were yet future, not something presently being fulfilled. We need to have a Bible reason for any doctrinal position we proclaim. Since Jesus Christ is the foundation, and we know that a foundation serves as the beginning, Jesus Christ is the beginning of the church. Some might wince at this thought since Jesus Christ always existed. It is important to note that the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost are eternal. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and they called his name, the Word made flesh, Jesus. The Word is the Son who was manifest in the flesh, and God manifest in the flesh was called Jesus Christ. He is the foundation of the church. The church does not begin with the Word, the Creator. Instead, it begins with the Word made flesh, who died upon a cross and rose again. The head of the church is not the Son of God, although the person who is the head of the church is the Son of God. The head of the church is the man Christ Jesus. Therefore, Christians are not completed Jews or Hebrew Christians. We are a new thing, a brand new thing that started with Jesus Christ. Now consider how the church's foundation differs from the foundations that preceded it. Solomon's Temple, 1 Kings 7.10 And the foundation was of costly stones, even great stones, stones of ten cubits and stones of eight cubits. And above were costly stones, after the measures of huge stones and cedars. The New Jerusalem Revelation 21:19 And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysoprasus, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst. The foundation stones for the old temple and the foundation stones for the new Jerusalem were and will be quite stunning and strong. God created them. They were fashioned for a purpose, yet all the stones were and are inanimate and thus dead. None of these beautiful stones contain life in them. That means that the foundation of the Old Testament temple was lifeless. Likewise, the foundation of the new Jerusalem is lifeless. That temple was built on dead stones. The New Jerusalem, as beautiful as it is, is built on dead stones. There is no life whatsoever in those stones. Now consider the New Testament, recorded in the Old Testament. Isaiah 28:16. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. When God made this statement in Isaiah, the temple had already been built. God was not talking about building an Old Testament temple, and God did not lay those stones in the temple. Solomon instructed the men to lay the stones of the temple. Yet God proclaimed that he was going to lay a stone. He said when he laid this stone, it was going to be for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, and it would be a sure foundation. Since it is obvious this points to Jesus Christ, it is safe to say that the foundation of the church is a living stone. With the basic premise of a foundation firmly established, we can now build upon the concepts with which this chapter commenced. The foundation is laid. First Corinthians says, For other foundation can no man lay than is laid. The Bible does not say that the foundation is presently being laid. The foundation is not being renovated. In fact, man does not need to tear down the foundation, start over for a new generation and a new age and a new time. The foundation is laid. Additionally, there are not several different foundations. There is only one foundation. Christians may not see everything in the Bible exactly the same. Believers certainly do not do everything the same way, yet all saved people are on the same foundation. This does not mean that everyone is doing the right things on that one foundation, yet the foundation is the same for every person. The foundation is Jesus Christ. The foundation is not a church. It is Jesus Christ. The foundation is not even the church. It is Jesus Christ. The church is simply not the foundation. Jesus Christ is the foundation. Now what that means is that the church is not of a greater value or more importance than Jesus Christ. Some religions say the church says, the church teaches, the church believes. The church is not more important than the foundation. The foundation is Jesus Christ. The foundation is not a denomination. The authors of this book are Baptist, yet there are some who proclaim to be more Baptist than they are Christian. Yet there are some Christians 
that should be more Baptist, but a denomination is not the foundation. Men laid this foundation. Up to this point, most would probably agree with the premise of the discussion. Yet at this point, it is likely men will begin to divide, but the scripture must be the authority. After all, it was Paul that stated, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, another man buildeth thereupon, 1 Corinthians 3.10. Understanding this truth is crucial. In fact, only by grasping this truth can one fully understand the doctrinal meaning of Ephesians 2.20. Ephesians 2.20, And ye are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone, but he alone is not the foundation. Ephesians says that we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So how does a person know he is on the right foundation? People may say, I love Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I trusted in Jesus. But what have you done with what the apostles laid? Some will look to Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, and think, I got this. But the Bible does not say apostles singular. It says apostles. There's more than one apostle who established the foundation of the New Testament church. This means that the doctrines applicable to and necessary for the foundation of the New Testament church are those written by the apostles and prophets. Stop and be sure you understand the import of this truth. The scripture teaches that the foundation stone, chief cornerstone, is Jesus Christ. But the foundation of the church is more than the chief cornerstone alone. The foundation of the church is the God-revealed set of truths about Jesus Christ given by the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone, and we are building upon that chief cornerstone and the foundation. Yet we are not to be building on the foundation with the wrong ideas about baptism, the wrong ideas about repentance, the wrong ideas about the resurrection, and the wrong ideas about any truth. Hebrews chapter 6 says, There are established truths that prove whether a church has the true Jesus and the true foundation. Hebrews 6, one. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. The foundation is not just any Jesus. Mormons have a Jesus. Jehovah's Witnesses have a Jesus. Muslims have a Jesus. Catholics have a Jesus. So does every other religion and schism. The foundation involves those truths set forth by God in the Bible so you could know the true Jesus, the Son of God, sent down from heaven to be the Savior of the world. The foundation is His person and the essential truths regarding His work. Most churches do not teach the truth about Jesus Christ, so the people can never get anchored to a solid foundation. If a church or a preacher does not line up with what God gave the apostles, they or he are off the foundation, even though they love Jesus. Footnote number three. Every saved person truly has the foundation settled for eternity, but spiritually speaking, a person can veer away from the truths to be built on that foundation. This is what we mean by some being off the foundation. A lot of churches have their own hand on the cornerstone, Jesus, but they are not building their beliefs, doctrine, practice, and manner of living on the foundation. God does not want you somehow connected to the corner. God does not want you touching the cornerstone. God does not want you leaning on the cornerstone. He wants you building upon that foundation. No doubt, most of the modern churches love Jesus and worship Jesus in their own way. They are just not on the foundation. Many of them have the cornerstone, but they do not have the apostles. This foundation is not just what Jesus did on the cross. He is the chief cornerstone. It is what he gave the apostles to establish and teach and ordain. It is these truths upon which the church is to be built. Yet the Bible mentions two men by name that got off the foundation. 2 Timothy 2.17 And their word will eat at doth the canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. What is an aspect of the foundation according to Hebrews 6, 1 and 2? 
the resurrection. The scripture did not say that these men denied Christ. It said they messed up the doctrine of the resurrection. This church that God built 2,000 years ago and has been added to for two millennia has had countless men like Hymenaeus. Yet the foundation of God standeth sure. The church that God built has had countless men like Philetus. Yet the foundation of God standeth sure. Arius has never personally shown up to any church in existence today. Neither have the false teachers, Origen or Clement. Churches have not had to deal with the scenes showing up at their churches. The only way to know about them is to look them up in the history books. Do you know who has shown up in our churches? Some of the same bunch that has been in your church. When this thing is all done, Calvin will not tear the church down. Jehovah's Witnesses will not tear the church down. Hyper this and hyper that will not tear the church down. Contemporary music will not tear the church down. There is always something to guard against, fight against, and deal with. But the foundation cannot be shaken. The foundation cannot be destroyed because the foundation standeth sure. Praise God. In the end, we do not anchor ourselves to Paul or to Paulus independently. We do, however, anchor to Paul and Apollos as they anchored to Christ. Paul said, be followers of me, but if you lock in there, you're going to get off the foundation. After all, Jesus said, follow me. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Christ and the apostles are joined together. You can't follow Paul without following Christ. A living foundation. Consider what makes this building so different. The first stone that was laid for the foundation of this building was alive and one that gives life to others. This is certainly not true of the stones in the temple. The stones in the New Jerusalem could not give anybody life. Yet the stone which the builders rejected and that became the chief cornerstone was alive and offers life to all who trust in him. This is completely different from any other stone, whether the stones of the temple or the New Jerusalem. Christ is throughout the Old Testament in type and prophecy and in promise. Christ is throughout the Old Testament in the pictures of the sacrifices and the pictures of the feast days and even the pictures of the tabernacle and temple furniture. All of that. Yet, if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law, Galatians 3.21. Therefore, there was not one person that got or could get life from these stones. Then God said, I am going to lay a living stone. First Peter chapter 2 reveals an important difference between the church and the temple. No Old Testament sacrifice will get a person reborn, and there's no living stone in the temple. First Peter 2.2 2, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Again, there was no living stone in that temple. There's no living stone in the New Jerusalem. But the foundation today is a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, the reference matching Isaiah. When we build upon that living foundation, we take on the life of the foundation as lively stones. We are not dead participants in a dead religion. We are living participants in a living Christ. We are not just building blocks stacked one upon another. We are alive, living stones, lively stones. The passage continues that we are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. The church is not Israel continued. The church is not the Old Testament plan part two. The church is not the covenants reform. The church is a brand new thing. One was dead. This one is alive. One could not give life. One celebrates the life it has been given from Jesus Christ. Men spend much time and energy arguing about how or if people got everlasting life from the Old Testament law. God settled this debate in Galatians. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law, Galatians 3.21. Dead stones cannot produce living stones. Men rightly denounce that notion when refuting the teaching of evolution 
but embrace such a notion with a misunderstanding of the Old Testament salvation. Think about it. Jesus did not say, now I am the life. He said, I am the life. He did not say, from now forward, I am the way. He said, I am the way. Those who want life get it from one person, Jesus Christ. Until Jesus Christ paid for sins on the cross, the person had to wait with Abraham to ascend. New Testament believers are instantly made living stones. From whence comes this life? When a person gets attached to the living stone, Christ makes him a living stone. Impossible under the law. Upon what are ye built? Luke 6, 47. Whoso cometh to me, and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house, and digged deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, and the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. You do not want to get into a Presbyterian house. You do not want to get into a Catholic house. You do not want to get into a non-denominational house. You do not want to get into a Baptist house. You want to get into a house that is built on that rock. Do you know why? The floods are coming. They have been coming nonstop for two millennia, but the house stands. The house God built stands, and it is not because the walls are so high. It is because that foundation stone goes way down deep. Jesus said he would build his church upon the confession of Peter that Jesus is the Christ. Matthew 16:16. 16, 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Peter's not the rock. Peter's confession concerning Jesus being the Christ is the rock. The gates of hell have prevailed against one reformation after another. The gates of hell have prevailed against one movement after another. The gates of hell have prevailed against one revival after another. Yet they have never prevailed against the church built by God on Jesus Christ. We better not get too excited about this man or that man or this preacher or that preacher. They all die or fall or get senile before they die. Yet the church rolls on. Jesus Christ is just standing right there, that chief cornerstone. Those apostolic truths are standing right there, unshaken. Do not give your heart to a man. Do not give your heart to a movement. You need to get square on that foundation. Luke fourteen twenty eight. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation, is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Do you know what God did way back in time? The Father was with the Son and the Holy Ghost. He hypothetically said to the Son, This is what it is going to take. You will have to shed your blood and die to redeem fallen humanity. To the Holy Ghost, the Father said, And this is what it is going to take. You will need to live inside their sorry bodies and keep them sealed until the day of redemption. Again, the father continued, And when it is all done, I will send you down and blow a trumpet, and we will bring them all up here and make them just like you. That was always God's plan. For a little over 4,000 years, God the father digged deep, Luke 6, 48. Finally, it was time for him to lay the foundation upon the rock. When Christ started building his church, he was certain he could finish the job. You can rest assured that our wise master builder will not fail. This church will be completed. It will be escorted into his presence. It will be glorified and crowned and rewarded. And everyone will say, look at what he built. Praise the Lord. This is the end of chapter 41.